Hey Pyro, autumn is almost here. And one of the best things about autumn is the harvest. And another thing is the hosting. I love having people over and I love feeding them things from my garden. It is so much fun. And so for this project, we have combined the two. We're doing something that helps celebrate the harvest and helps you with your hosting, at least if you're gonna be cooking. We are going to be doing a project where we have spoons, spatulas, and spurtles. Have you guys ever heard of a spurtle? It was kind of a new thing to me, and I think they're really cool. So this is our project for the Crate Club this month. If you guys haven't signed up, you can go sign up over at crateclub.burnsavvy.com, and that's where you can solve that. But aren't they cute? We've got little pumpkins and flowers. And this one has a little oak leaf and some acorns and another pumpkin with some hops. Isn't that fun? I just, I love autumn themed anythings, <laughs> really. So come join me on this project. It's gonna be super fun. I'm Jenny Lizenby, your pyro professor. This is Burn Savvy. Let's burn. Okay, forgive the fan in the background. The mosquitoes are eating me alive and the fan is the only thing that saves me. Uh, yeah, so we are going to be using a spoon, a spatula, and a spurtle, and you're going to probably want a practice piece of wood. I highly recommend it for everybody. If you have the Crate Club, you've got this already. If you um, are part of the Crate Club, you also have the patterns, and then there are scissors and tape that you will need for the patterns. These are my favorite scissors. These are in the Wood Burning Tools and Accessories Kit if you want to get that. You can also get this little sanding block in the Wood Burning Tools and Accessory Kit, and this is the one I use, 220 grit. And then you're going to need a sealant and a rag, and this is a butcher block sealant, and you will need your burner. I always forget to mention that, but you will need your burner. It's kind of the featured um, tool. You're also going to need a tracing tool and carbon paper. If you don't have a tracing tool, you can use a pencil or a pen, but this comes in that wood burning accessories kit and I love them. So to start, we're going to start with just the spurtle. So I am going to take my pattern and cut it out. Then it is time to tape it down and you just wanna tape down one side so that it doesn't move and you can lift it and check the pattern, okay? You want the carbon paper shiny side down in between the wood and the pattern. I'm gonna turn it that way. All the way under there, okay? Then you simply trace over it with the tool. When you finish tracing, just double check that you've got everything, all the little dots, all the little petals, and then you are ready to burn. If you want to, you can leave this here, and then if you discover that you've missed something, it's really easy to just trace back over it. Or if it's bugging you, just take it off and take your chances. We are going to be doing some basic shading. So you can use one of these nibs. This is a universal point or a chisel tip, okay? You can use one of these points. I'm actually not sure what this one is called. My machine didn't come with a name, but it's basically a cylinder cut at a diagonal, and that's a decent one to use. You can use this little leaf type nib. I am going to use the small round flat shader. I am using a Colwood detailer. If you guys want to see a review on this machine and some of the other machines, I have a playlist of wood burning tools that talk about the pros and the cons of different professional machines. So go check that out. So the first thing I want to do is test this out. I am going to start out at about a level five and you test it out over on here to make sure it's the heat level that you want. Now typically you want to start a little bit lighter than you need. This still needs just a second. There we go. So I do not want this to be super dark. 
and that's probably darker than I want it. So I'm going to actually bring that just below a level five, a medium heat, and every machine is going to be different. So it's really important that you practice this and test to see where your dark heat is and where your medium heat is. I like to start with things that are towards the front first. And I am going to spin this a lot, okay? I, it, it really helps my wrist. And speaking of my wrist, I'm gonna prop my hand up on this bean bag here. This also comes in the wood printing tools and accessories kit. Guys, I use this stuff all the time. If you want it, go check it out, crateclub.burnsavvy.com. If you don't subscribe to the box, you can at least get the accessories kit. If I were you, I'd get both. <laughs> around this little space where there's the lines coming out, I'm going to trace it with my tool and then pull. Okay, all those beginner techniques that I teach you in that other video, the beginner technique video, it's all the same even with shading, okay? The difference is how you hold the pen, the nib that you're using and how you work with it. That's what makes the biggest difference. And then I'm going to trace around the petals of the flowers just a little. And I'm not tracing hard, I'm giving it a soft edge. When you're going for more realistic stuff, you want a softer edge. You also want to pull shadows from the bottom of the petal in front of it down towards the middle and then do that on the petal beneath it. Pull shadows from underneath the petal above it. And when I say pull shadows, I mean you place the nib against the edge of the petal that looks like it's supposed to be above and then you pull using the technique pulling towards you and as you pull towards you it creates shadows under the petals. Now for the pumpkin we are going to do kind of the same thing but instead of outlining the petals we are outlining these pumpkin ribs and making it more of an edge rather than an outline and then we will be adding some shadows here that I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to shade a little bit around on the right side of all of the ribs. And then on the left side, I'll burn on the left side of the ribs. Then I'm going to make a nice dark stem all the way around that edge. Take your time, there is no rush. And I like to just do it in stripes. But you can fill it in however you like. And that's how it's looking so far. I think I might do a little more scumbling here on the side, super light. For the acorns, uh, we are going to simply trace around it and pull in the sides. Don't forget to like this video if it's been helpful so far or if you've learned anything from it. And then subscribe if you want more tutorials like this one. Then we're gonna pretty much do the same thing with the acorns themselves, not their little hats. We'll trace around it and then bring it up. that and the hat needs a shadow underneath it so we're going to put a nice dark shadow under there and if you guys want more detailed instruction on shading my membership the white hot level 
has some shading tutorials that you guys can follow. And it's a crazy affordable rate, guys. My courses are closed at the moment. You can go jump into the membership right now where it is way affordable to learn how to do this shading stuff. So go check it out. And of course, if you wanna sign up for the Crate Club and get this box delivered straight to your door, head to crateclub.burnsavvy.com and subscribe. These are phenomenal gifts, by the way. So gift some to mom, gift some to dad, gift some to your boss and maybe gift yourself. So for these stems, I am simply going to turn the nib upside down to get a sharp spot on there. And then I'm going to trace those lines super fine with this edge. We're gonna do the same thing we did with these other ones. We're going to just basically trace around it and then add some stripes and some scumbling around the center. I want to add a little bit darker shadow to give it some higher contrast. And then I am going to keep a light shadow around the edge and then I'm gonna do another light shadow just on one side. I'll show you. And this time, actually, I'm gonna turn it all the way and I'm gonna pull from here and bring it down. Now we will outline the leaves. Again, not with a hard outline, but with kind of a gentle edge, okay? Then just pull from where the stem is, where the base is, pull up, up, up. It's not necessarily looking to give it lines, I'm looking to give it some uh, shadow. Turn it around and do some down here the same way. For the final details, I'm going to switch out this nib and use a ballpoint. And this one is a large ballpoint. If you're interested in these nibs, by the way, I have a link in the description where you can find them all and you can get a discount. So definitely go check that out. And I have burn savvy wood burning kits where you can buy the entire package of the top nibs that I use. And if you want to buy them separately, you can get that too. Pretty awesome. So this one is the large ball three. And if you're using a solid point, you can use the flow point, which is more like the large ball point. You can use a cone point, which is a really fine point, or you can use the mini flow. I find it so much easier to just use the large ball and dot the end of all the twigs. Hmm. I think I'm, I missed a twig. I'm going to pretend I didn't and dot it. <laughs> well, not exactly the best, but not bad. We're going to go with it. And the same up here. See how easy that was? And this one is done. Let's follow the same protocol for the spoon and the spatula. Now, of course, if you would like to switch these up, they are pretty interchangeable. This pattern will fit on this and this pattern will fit on this. I think I'm gonna switch them actually. Again, we are using the flat round shader and we will do the same kind of things where we pull from the base of the stem. We do the shadows around the pumpkins, just like we did on the spurtle.
right now the oak leaf we did not do on any of the others so I thought I would go ahead and demonstrate this well again we will just trace that middle with the sharp side of the pen or the nib here we're going to do the outside edge similarly to how we did the hops and I want this to be a slightly lower heat because I want this to not be quite such a harsh edge. So I'm just pulling in those edges and then I'm kind of scumbling over those edges. If you don't know what scumbling is, you need to go check out my video, the beginner wood burning techniques. I teach you all about it there. And that should be up here. Okay, from here, you can leave those light. You could add a few little stripes in there coming from the main leaf or the main vein. Uh, you can scumble it in to fill it in more. I think I'm going to leave mine to let it have a little more contrast in some of these areas. And then we're going to switch the nib to do those little spots. Oh no, I didn't burn that. After I burn that. All right, I switched the nib out for the ball point. So we'll be using that ball three again and adding the dots here, the dots here, and doing the curve here because I find that curved surfaces, like the ballpoint, do better with curved lines. And crate clubbers, be looking for your bonus pattern along with your bonus spurtle. Now, they are all three ready for some sealant. And we're going to use our butcher block oil and a lint-free cloth and we're going to apply that liberally over this and let it sit for 15 minutes. You should also know that a little goes a long way. Then you're going to let this dry for about 15 minutes and buff it off and then I will add another coat and let it sit overnight. You can also watch this beautiful video where we talk more about shading right here. Remember to join me in the membership too. There are different levels, so make sure to check out the video to see which level suits you best. I'm Jannie Lisenby, your Pyro Professor, and I'll see you on the next video. Later, Pyro.